All right, everyone. Hello there, and welcome to a preview of the forthcoming Ultimate One Megabyte Side Two Side Incognito 1088XL Ultimate One Megabyte. It's been decided is not an indelible part of the system, but nevertheless, they do usually have an Ultimate One Megabyte in them. So 1088XL, 1088XLD, uh, Spartan OS X drivers for Side Side Two, My IDE Two. My IDE, internal My IDE, Colleen XELCF soft driver. I uh, think that's everything. Uh, a few fixes in F disk. Uh, a few little tweaks here and there in the APT tools. So it's been a few months now. It's, I think the last version I released was in uh, August last year, 3.02. So we're going to go straight to 3.10 now. One issue which got fixed, which was a regression with the config sys setting here. So when that's set to default it should fall back to the boot drive setting. So if you have boot drive set to drive 3 and you've got config sys set to default Spotted OS X should still boot off drive 3. That didn't happen before, well it does now again, which it just reverts to the previous behaviour uh, that we had before. So that's fixed now. You'll notice this is the wording of this has changed a little bit. It's actually hard to see what's greyed out and what doesn't, but uh, for me that grainy dark it looks horrible. But anyway, that's greyed out when boot drives default and when it's or when it's drive one. So swap D1 and D2 is an actual. I reworded it. It's supposed to be more descriptive. It actually swaps the swaps the two drive requests around. The default. A uh, plugin which handles stereo detection among other things that's changed the stereo detection change uh, method has changed because uh, candle said that it wouldn't work with his uh, as yet unreleased uh, simple stereo board I'm, I'm not entirely sure I've got my head around why the other method wouldn't work which relied on uh, IRQs on the second chip but it didn't work anyway when I changed it. I'm now using uh, the version KMK suggested, which depends on the potential second chip being in a reset state. Change some of the wording on these menus. Nothing really drastic in the in the main BIOS actually. Uh, the VBXE testing's been uh, strengthened a bit, I would say. Some changes in the PBI BIOS, um, which also happened in the loader. There was an undocumented feature, uh, by which I mean undocumented anyway, including in Avery's uh, hardware manual, uh, which allows the um, side ID registers to be completely blocked, kind of hidden, I suppose. I'm probably using the wrong wording here, but um, when the card is removed now, um, the thing is basically held in a reset state. So as soon as you put a card back in, it's immediately, it's it's reset the moment it goes into the slot. That's how I understand it anyway. Of course we should get the partition table back here. And that should help with glitchy card swaps and stuff like that. Um, and the other thing with the PBI BIOS and the loader together is that they both run the card in PIO mode 3, uh, which is a fix that was recommended again by Candle. To improve card compatibility and it's to do with the I already cycle timing so you should get if you're having problems before with certain cards or card swapping and that kind of thing maybe this will help you a little bit there is a corresponding hardware modification which I won't go into here uh, on the side 2 cartridge which if everything's working you don't need it but I think that will be published at some point uh, if Candle decides to do so Highest suggested months ago now, we were having a discussion on the forum about uh, buffer sizes, sector sizes when uh, in hard disk drivers and stuff. There's a long story short, there's a lot more stringent checks going on now uh, in the PBI BIOS that the, um, that the DCB, the size of the sector specified in the DCB, actually matches what's on the target volume uh, where the I.O. request is heading for. Uh, and this has some quite nice side effects. For example, it um, 
catches uh, things like trying to get a directory from say disk based Sparta DOS or MyDOS or some DOS that doesn't handle um, 512 byte sectors you'll now get a NAC error from the handler rather than the driver trying to fill a buffer that's half the size it should be stuff like that. Other things like uh, immediate mode uh, IO are now supported very obscure esoteric stuff that I'd never actually heard of until Hias brought it up but yeah stuff like with buffer lengths of zero um, it will still do the IO operation but with no actual data transfer I think that's it, oh I'm getting mixed up um, and if D or, or, uh, it's, uh, it's something like that uh, or, and uh, D stats as well is more carefully observed that should be very robust now and, and a good thing straight away when I made these changes I found a couple it exposed a couple of bugs in the APT tools which have been fixed uh, since then so if we have a look now at the loader which was of course the subject of my uh, recent couple of videos that I decided to do <laughs> about uh, the um, the fat loader shootout yeah, that was quite funny they've proved quite popular actually and uh, you may have seen the I've linked it under the second video uh, temps response video because uh, he was already working on uh, revised firmware for the AVG cart and he's uh, he's fixed up a lot of stuff and greatly improved the performance there so that's all lots of fun um, and as, a, as a, I posted a correction as well uh, under uh, the first video because I timed, I've got in the video that Atari Blast takes 36 seconds to load on this device using this loader and can I hell get that to repeat now and it comes out at 38 which is exactly the time that uh, AV, uh, that uh, Temp managed it's not a terribly long file so to take 36, uh, 38 seconds uh, it seems to be spending the lion's share of its time unpacking data so it's probably a really bad example to choose uh, for benchmarking your loader but never mind <laughs> so this one uh, I will time I'll time this one actually just for just for uh, shits and giggles as it were uh, let's see we will get the stopwatch on the screen that'd be quite fun I'll probably screw this up horribly well I'll, I'll press this with this this hand and this with this hand okay let's go there we go right <laughs> And then I've got to hit that when it finishes. Oh dear me. At least you can see there's no cheating going on here. Oh, there you go. 38.31. <laughs> Look at that. Alright then. So absolute confirmation. There you go. I don't know why I got 30 sec 36 seconds, unless there was a version of the loader that I was using for the tests, like a pre-release one where I'd done so much uh, bloated optimizations and, and just ridiculous, I don't know. I, what I'm thinking is actually I wrote down 36 on paper and my handwriting so bad that I copied it. I transcribed it as 36, <laughs> wrote 38 down and put it down as 36, but anyway, it doesn't matter in the, in the context of the videos actually because it's still... <laughs> Even 38 beat everything in the video, but uh, not anymore. So yeah, the, the hot topic of the moment, search times. Yes, I was, I was running it through the performance analyzer in Altera, you see, because I was wondering if there were any areas of code that were really hoovering up a lot of cycles in this search algorithm, you see. And I happened to notice some code that was taking up a lot of space. And it was actually, believe it or not, you see this scroll bar at the side here? Well that's actually made of player missile graphics. I think the I think it's double line resolution. That could be single line resolution, I'm not too sure actually. But anyway, the um the scroll bar appeared the code that actually draws this scroll bar in player missile graphics down the right hand side here. It seemed to be running all the time. Well it's obviously a loop, it has to erase itself and draw itself. And uh, particularly during a search, because you, during the search, I don't know, I haven't actually checked if it's the case with other stuff, but while you, while the search is running, you can still move around and you can do stuff like while it's building, you know. The scroll bar has to be maintained during the search phase because it's going to shrink 
dynamically as the new results are coming in, you see. Um, but I thought, well, hang on. If, if this is quite a considerable loop to draw this thing and erase it, why is it being called every single iteration of the main loop? So I'm, I'm grabbing a new file name, checking that it matches the string um, in every loop, and drawing this damn scroll bar, even if no new file was added to the list. It was an incredible waste of time. So anyway, I fixed it up so that the scroll bar is only calculated and redrawn when, when it needs to be, i.e. when you do a full a full screen redraw when you go to the next page or when the list has changed size and my god well look at the I'll show you this up so T I and as soon as I hit M I'll start the I'll start the clock. Right. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. 259.22. <laughs> so yes, yeah, like quite a considerable length of time was being wasted with that scroll bar there. So this is the home soft disk. We might as well do this one as well. Right, T E R and as I press M I'll start the clock. There we go. Right, 19, just over 19 seconds. 19 seconds is still reasonable for 4,400 files just using the power of the 6502 and nothing else. Yeah, this 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 was bugging me before. Um, in the old version of the firmware, uh, the loader, a long name like this would obviously scroll backwards and forwards. I'll find a longer one actually. That illustrates the point a bit better. There we go. So here's a long file name. Uh, it doesn't fit on the screen. I mean, I can take these file sizes off. Um, show size disabled. There we go. So there's the... There's the... I've just spat on the screen. Christ. So it would scroll left, right, but, this, but the extension would scroll as well. So as soon as you alighted on the file name, if it was a long name, for a while you couldn't tell what bloody file type it was because this was sliding off the side of the screen. So now they are fixed in position. The file extension, that is. Uh, so you always know what you're looking at. Uh, I didn't want to use like a single letter code um, and stuff because I, I support quite a few different formats. So I've changed that and I can't imagine it being any other way now. It just seems so right for it to do that. So if I mount that uh, without a reboot, so if I press control, this has always worked this way, control and return. There we are, mounted. So if we go onto the drive map here. There's the two disk images, okay, I mean it's taken as it's implied that they are ATR so the file extension moves as it used to before. So that's side 1 and side 2 on drives 1 and drive 2. Now always you could use Control and S to switch them around from the loader. You may not have known that but you can. So now I've Control and S, S2 on uh, drive 1 and S1 on drive 2. I mean, why would you need to do that? I don't know, maybe they got maybe they got in the wrong order because you know you normally boot the game and then when it asks for the disc you press the button. You may have lost track of what the hell you were doing. So, but now, just as, a, just as an extra nice touch, it's just a quality, quality touch. What happens when I press the actual button on the cartridge? Oh ho ho! Yeah, 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 did you see that? I'll do it again. Oh yes, it swaps, swaps the images right in the loader as well. It's just a nice little extra touch. There was, a, 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 apart from anything else, it actually fixes a, an issue as well. Um, it's not just cosmetic. The way it was coded before, if you swapped the images in the loader like this, and they were in different folders, it wouldn't or it wouldn't always pick them up properly, and you then you could actually end up with a duplicate file name in this list. Uh, which is something else I noticed as well while I was testing. I seem to notice nearly all the issues in these things. Apart from Marius, he, he, he's a good uh, bug hunter as well. 
but uh, yeah so that's fixed as well that was that was a really strange I can't even remember how I found that bug um, but yeah so if we go into if we come out of uh, search mode and if we find them there we go so you can see what happens when I press the button here it immediately flips them over which is just why I mean yeah why but it's nice it's nice I've dropped support for 8k flat cartridges in this loader it gave me a lot of extra space to to do other things with and make other improvements and I just didn't like it it was it would it would load the 8k image and fool the OS into thing and it was ba internal basic so it was reset protected uh, yeah but you can get most of these things as XEX files anyway and side 3 is going to come along and you're going to have full banked cartridge emulation anyway so what's the point uh, so hopefully nobody will miss that okay so I'm using the joystick to control the loader I've taken away the diagonal gestures for those who even knew they existed the loader now works properly with uh, my text device um, but since I've lost the ability to issue a page up and page down uh, via the joystick uh, I've added acceleration here so if you hold the joystick down in any particular direction up or down it is um, it'll accelerate like so so you can get through the list pretty quick without recourse to page up and page down which you would normally get with shift control down and up like so so I think that pretty much covers everything that's changed a uh, high speed SIO driver there was a bug in that for years and it was caused by uh, a transcription error when I was porting HiAS's code into the PBI BIOS and it resulted in the uh, XF551 high speed mode not working uh, I actually noticed that in a video about uh, Zaxxon's internal three and a half inch floppy from last August I think it was so uh, yes uh, I hope that was of interest and um, thank you very much for watching as always and uh, keep on subscribing and sharing the content I've now got YouTube community page now so I can do polls and questions and posts and stuff like this oh god it's fantastic um, so anyway I'll see you in the next video